this is Joseph Mendoz with another video for virtualsheetmusic.com. Uh, so today, um, I, uh, the, the idea for this video was prompted by uh, the last video that I made, uh, the differences between sautié and, and spiccato and then how to get that sautié. But I didn't really spend a lot of time, I think, in that video on how to get a spiccato. So I think we're going to focus on that today. Actually, the, first, defining what spiccato is and clarifying again the difference between it and sautier, and then talking about some different methods to try to get a spiccato. Sautier is one of those strokes that I've found that a lot of students don't um, struggle with too much. The main issue with sautier um, is not getting the stroke to happen, but getting the stroke to happen in such a way so that you can do it for a long time, like it's usually asked for. For example, in the Popper Hungarian Rhapsody, there's that whole section that just kind of goes on like that um, for a while. And if you're not, if you're not really using uh, the wrist and the fingers more in that stroke, and you're using too much arm, you're going to wear yourself out big time. Um, uh, so that's kind of the main factor there. However, with spiccato, things are a little bit different. Things get a little bit funny. Um, uh, uh, because really the big problem is actually getting the spiccato in the first place. Now, I've never found a student or a player, uh, for that matter, who is doing a spiccato incorrectly. I, there's almost no such thing. Uh, or doing a spiccato in, inefficiently or, or something like that. I've never really found that because in order to get the bow to really bounce effectively, uh, you need to actually be doing pretty much exactly the right thing. I think this is why learning the spiccato for some people is a little bit more difficult, a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, so the first thing I have to say is, is, is uh, in order to get a spiccato, you need to understand three things. Uh, you need to understand the springiness of the string. You need to understand the springiness of the hair on the bow and the springiness of the wood. You basically have three trampolines here working all the same time. And you have to be controlling that springiness in your stroke. Now there's two ways to control it. There's the downward motion, uh, which if you force it too much, then you get too much bounce back, or not enough bounce back because you're not allowing it to bounce back, or if you, if you throw it too softly on the spiccato, if you're too soft with it, then you won't get a high enough bounce that, with which you can then catch the bow again and then send it back down for another bounce. So I'll just demonstrate really quickly that a spiccato basically will look like that. You, that. Now you notice that there is some motion in my um, in my fingers and in my uh, these knuckles and in the wrist here. There is some motion there, but you also notice that there's quite a bit of motion coming from the shoulder as well. With a good spiccato, you need that actually. You need a little bit more coordination between all the parts of the arm than you do say in the sautier, which which again is more that, and as you can see, is a lot less of the shoulder. In fact, the shoulder is not really moving much. It's only the elbow and then and then primarily the fingers and the wrist. So you'll notice in the spiccato again that not only is it a slower stroke, but in order to get the bounce, I need to have a little bit more of this sideways motion. That's the first part. The second part that you have to understand is, again, going back to this trampoline idea. Um, you really need to be able to throw the bow down. And by, by, when I say throw, I don't mean any sort of aggressive throw, because if you throw it aggressively, the bow, you won't be able to get the bow to bounce back like that. So there's that perfect amount of drop or throw that allows the bow to bounce back up. Now, once it gets to the top or the apex, of where it's where it's going to go, you know, like a bouncing ball, you know, has an apex, has that that highest point that it's going to reach before it falls back down again. Your bow has the same thing. As soon as it reaches that apex, apex, that's when you want to have a little bit more gentle pressure coming from back from the index finger again to send it back down. When I say gentle pressure, I mean literally that it's very, very, very little to do this well. Now all you have to do then is combine that basic feeling with this sideways motion from the shoulder. The reason why you need more shoulder in the stroke and less of the hand um, is so that the hand stays free and passive to always monitor those bounces. That's really critical. tip for spiccato is that I found that using slightly flatter hair helps this as well. Uh, I think there's, there's two reasons why. First of all, getting the slightly flatter hair 
actually immobilizes your hand and your wrist a little bit more. So I think because of that, it allows you to kind of stabilize things here a little bit so that you can use a little bit more. If I'm down here, I tend to get a little bit too overactive with my hand and the spiccato starts to get a little bit slappy instead of resonant and clear when it's combined with that shoulder motion. And then it's really easy, once you've learned it, it's really easy just to always kind of have it. It's like riding a bike. Once you have it, it's just always going to be there. And then if you want to get a little bit louder, of course there's a limit with spiccato and how loud it can go. Then all you have to do is, it's the same rules, you move the bow a little closer to the bridge, and you might have to increase the amount of force that you're using on the drop, but really not much. And then if you want a really soft spiccato, all you need to do is actually make the jump just a little bit lower, and of course move it up towards the fingerboard. Then you can get a nice soft spiccato like that. So I think that's about it, about spiccato. Uh, please, if you have any questions, leave them. I'll do my best to get, them, get to them as soon as I can. I apologize uh, to those of you who uh, I have delayed. Uh, in some cases, I think even a month long. I apologize for that. Sometimes they miss uh, my, uh, uh, my site there. And uh, so you have my apologies. I'll do my best to get to those as soon as possible. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, don't leave your comments on YouTube. Well, well, you're feel free to leave your comments on YouTube, but I won't see them. I won't reply to them. Uh, just leave them on the virtualsheetmusic.com website. So thank you. Uh, once again, this has been Joseph Mendoz for virtualsheetmusic.com. Thank mm -hmm. you.